Now, hey developers, so today we're doing something really cool. We are looking at some experimental features inside Vue 3. Now, these two features are something you guys probably should check out. They are the Composition API Syntactic Sugar and the State Driven CSS Variables. So these two features are very spooky. Okay, so they're not spooky, but I like that theme because it is Halloween. So I uh, made our thumbnail look like a little bit Halloween-y. But if you're watching this in the future, don't worry. We're gonna just deep dive into these two experimental features as of this recording and show how they work. Hey, and if you are interested in Vue 3, Vue 3, I see there's a lot of stuff out there for it, but I created a really cool mini course for Vue 3. It's really awesome to get notified when it's going to be released. I put a link in the description and also I'll put a link in the comments in the chat. So if you guys wanna check it out, just uh, sign up for that link and I'll let you know when it's out. Okay, so let's just deep dive into it. All right, so here is the documentation on the official Vue 3 documentation site. You can see right here, these are the two experimental features that we have. One's called the SF. A single file component composition API syntactic sugar. The other one is the SFC state driven CSS variables. So both of these will be, be in the link in the description. So before I show you guys exactly how this works, we can look at sort of the, uh, the actual RFC for each and why would we may want to use these. So for example, on this one, this is the script setup to improve the authoring experience when using the composition API in single, inside single file components. Now, the motivation behind this, and I'll make this a little bit bigger, was when authoring components using composition API very often, very often setup is the only option that's being used. This results in um, some unnecessary boilerplate. So you can see right here in this example, you have the export default, you have this setup function, this const count, but it's really set, but why should you even use like these extra lines here? In addition, one of the most often complained about aspect of the composition API is the necessity to repeat all the bindings that need to be exposed to the render context using a return object. The RFC introduces a compiler powered alternative. So if you know anything about the composition API, you always have to return like this object. So it's kind of a little bit weird and might, you know may not make a lot of sense to some people. But what you can do is you can actually use it with this script tag and setup equals props. And, uh, and you can even inside this setup here, you can destructure out your mint and everything you else you would need. So we'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, the other RFC I want to talk about is this one called single, uh, this sporting injection of component state driven CSS variables. So in this example, the motivation behind it is the style provides straightforward CSS co-location encapsulation, but it's purely static, which means up to this point, we have no ca compatibility of dynamically updating the styles at runtime based on the component state. Uh, so just what I think about this, it just makes it really easy to access those CSS variables inside your app. And you use it with this kind of styled scope approach. Well, for example, you use this style right here, style vars, and you can still have global and scoped vars as well if you so choose. So I went ahead and created a really basic app here. I just created a, a brand new Vue 3 app using Vue CLI, which uh, if you don't know, I've done a lot of videos on it, but it's just a really easy tool to create Vue apps and it's running on port 8080. And so what I wanted to show you is just real quickly how I would you know, um, make this text right here, this hello world, maybe when I press this button, that it changes this text right here. So that should be pretty easy. So to do that, uh, in my style, I'm going to create this new text. I'm going to change the color and it's going to, I'm going to use this color variable here. And now I can expose this color variable, the CSS color variable inside my app component. Let me make sure you guys can see it. Okay. You guys should be able to see this. So to do that, all we need to do is you have the style here, you put vars equal, and then you put uh, quotes and then the name of the variable. So in this case, color. And now I can actually access the color because I had a, I have this data object. So this color right here in this data object matches to the color and the style between the brackets, the style vars here. And I could do something like this. I could do on click handler that I just want to take this color and it's still equal red. I'm going to have it equal blue. So I'm going to do this 
and you can see here, now it's working already. We already have it red because it defaults to red right here. But if I press this me button, it turns into blue. So you can see this is a really, really simple example of how now we've been able to use dynamic uh, of CSS variables inside our view app. But I think we can do better if we want to show the next one here, the next experimental feature, this composition API syntactic sugar. So if we wanted to convert this over to a uh, using the composition API, you normally would do something like this. You have this setup function. I'm not going to worry about anything passed into it right now. And then we would create some sort of ref. So I'm, I'll do an import here. Import ref from view. So I can make a reactive component in here. And I'm going to have const color equals ref. I don't know. Let's make this one orange. And then I return color in this object here, kind of sort of like this. And so in this case, I don't need this uh, data object any longer. I don't really need this component either. So if I save it, I go back to my really simple example. Now you can see it's orange, but if I press the button, it turns into blue. So now I'm using the composition API, but let's try to use this experimental feature. So uh, the way to do that is instead of having this script tag this way, we're going to change our script tag. We're going to put in setup here. And we could have, um, we could add in, like if we wanted to pass something in, like our props or our mit, we could then have equal something and then have it come out through here. But we're not going to do that for this example. And then now I need to do is I don't have this export default. I can delete it. Uh, I don't have this return, don't have this uh, setup function. So um, I just have opening and closing brackets. And now um, what we need to do, oops, actually what I need to do is to export const color. There it is. So now here I'm refreshing it. I don't have any errors in the console. We'll double check. Nope, nothing rare there. I press it, it still works. So now I have deleted out a bunch of boilerplate we no longer need. And yeah, it works great. So now we have this just one script tag. We're exporting out the information we need. And now it's available with inside the template, which is really cool. And I could just, if I wanted to, I could make this look nicer. But yeah, so it works as expected, which is really neat. Now I've noticed in some instances, and if you look back at the, uh, the documentation for this, for components, I just wanted to say that for components, you can have this export default as foo. You can do it like this. So this seems to work uh, correctly. Now, if you want to declare your props, um, you actually do still need to do the export default in here. So this is how you would declare your props. Um, so that's what it says inside here. You still would need the export default for, for props here that you have to declare. But I think this is kind of a neat feature. Uh, it also has TypeScript support. You know, personally, I think I would use this on very simple components that don't have that I that I just want to use that I don't need to have this export default at all. I think more complicated ones, I still think I would use it the traditional way with the setup function just for a little bit easier uh, readability. But you know, I like this feature. It's pretty neat. And also, uh, there has been ways in the past to grab CSS variables out of your view uh, app, but I think this is a pretty elegant way of doing it, and it's nice that it's a, a new feature. So I want to hear what you guys think. Leave a comment below. Tell me if you like these two experimental features and if you're going to be using them inside your Vue 3 apps. I uh, really appreciate it. And also, once again, if you're looking to learn Vue 3, I have a link in the description below. If you click on it, you can sign up for my mailing list and I'll let you know when my new, brand new Vue 3 course will be out. I appreciate it. Thanks. Take care.